Hello, how is everybody this afternoon? My name is Katie and I own a DIY workshop called Junk to Jewels and we are located in Northwest Arkansas and I have a super fun, super simple craft. It's gonna take a little bit of time, but I think everybody can do it. And all we need is some craft paper and Sharpies basically. And then I'm gonna share some freebie files with you to make this beautiful um, scroll style artwork behind me. I did a Christmas theme on this one. So, um, my husband John, we call him the junk hunk, he's behind the camera today. So if you can say hi John, say hello if you're here and let us know where you're watching from. Oh, hello from Finland. Finland, gotcha. ready? Yeah. Probably not the afternoon there, huh? Mm. You didn't say hi? Okay, so have you all seen this, this cute scroll artwork type thing that's made on craft paper? I can seem a little bit intimidating, so I'm going to take all the intimidation factor out of it. I've gone through all the hiccups that you might come along the way, hit it along the way, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. And so, all right, so what I'm gonna start with is an engineer print. So I basically enlarged some graphics that I designed onto a, this is 18 by 24, um, engineer print from Staples. So that's gonna be the graphics. If you're super good at calligraphy or freehand, you could do that. Um, or if you have a Cricut or a silhouette, some kind of cutting machine, you could totally use that as well and create, um, you can apply vinyl or create a stencil with that and use it. But a lot of people don't have a cutter or something or don't have one that can cut this big. So this is gonna take the guesswork out of that. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna flip it over and chalk all over the back. Okay, so John, you gotta tell me where everybody's watching from. So we've got Wisconsin and Texas and Michigan and Finland. In Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Wow, ladies, lots of watching today. Everybody busy getting ready for the holidays, I'm sure. Right, one more spot. So, yeah. oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Usually, I'm using tools and paint. Today, I don't have to use either, so I'm a little um, excited about that. Mm -hmm. The junk punk can't tell me what to do since he's the the tool expert today. Yes, yes. <laughs> Handwriting might not be his thing, huh? No, handwriting is not my thing. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So, well, hello, wherever you're watching. If you know somebody crafty or somebody has um, a Cricut or a silhouette machine, share this video with them because I guarantee they're gonna have some theme that they would like to do this with. So, what I started with, I had my engineer print for from Staples. These are literally, I got two copies, and it was $3.92. So that means they're like $2 a piece. I got the 18 by 24 printout, but they do have two bigger sizes, and I think they're all two to four bucks, so mm -hmm. you can do this. Um, as far as graphics, I'm gonna be sharing the freebie of this printout in the Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas behind me over on our Junk to Jewels Facebook page later today. I didn't get it done this morning, but I'll have that over there so you can download it, and then you can place your own order at Staples if this is a project that you wanna tackle at home. Um, but I'm just flipping it over, and as you saw, I dem um, demonstrated putting chalk all over the back. Mm -hmm. I use sidewalk chalk. This is Crayola, but cheaper the better, wherever you find it. Um, you do want to keep in mind, you want to have a color that contrasts with what we're putting it on. So we're putting it on craft paper today, but I've also used it on wood-based signs. Um, if I was doing a dark stained wood, I probably, um, you know, yellow would be good, but blue might not look good. The darker colors might not. So you want to have a heavy amount of contrast. So, so play with that, because you'll probably get like five or six colors in your box of chalks, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take this print. Um, I've got it all chalked up, so it's about ready. And then we're gonna roll out some craft paper. And what I recommend is you roll out like an excess foot on the top and the bottom. So whatever size paper that you get, you wanna have about a foot extra to make that roll along the top and the bottom. I just have some extra boards and stuff. I'm gonna keep it from going crazy on me so right. I don't have to fight it too bad. Do we have any questions so far? Yeah, the bar asked, yes, the, these are purchased at Staples. Um, you can place your order online and and Katie has uh, the link. Well, she will have the um, file. Yeah, if you check out um, our Junk Jewels Facebook page, if you want to go over after the video or this afternoon um, and like our page, I'll be sharing the freebies for you. Mm -hmm. so, and you can go in on design your own too, right? You can totally design your own. I recommend like something like um, PickMonkey. It's PickMonkey.com. You can type in and it saves it as a PDF. Like it'll allow you to save with a blank background essentially. So if you're a little bit tech savvy, you can go in there and choose a blank background um, or canvas and then type in the words that you want. They have a bunch of fonts. You can use your own fonts on the computer. Um, and then you can type out whatever you like. And like I said, then I just upload to 
PicMonkey or upload to Staples once I've created in PicMonkey and then you can print out. Um, the craft paper is about 30 inches wide. I picked up this in like the wrapping paper type section, but if you can look in the shipping section, um, John buys big old rolls for our studio at like Lowe's and stuff. Yep, I get them. I think they're, um, they're still 30 inches wide, but they're, I think, 300 feet. Yeah, if you want to make a lot of scroll signs, you can buy 300 feet. Otherwise, stick with the wrapping paper, which is probably four or five bucks, and you can make several. So I'm just going to stretch this out and cut off um, the part that I don't need here. And we'll curl that up after we're done with our transferring. Yep. So, Lori, these are um, blueprints. Um, yeah, engineer prints or engineer blueprints. Yep. From Staples. Yep. And I've actually done pictures with them before. Has anybody else used engineer prints or blueprints for art in their home? Um, we did um, some frames and we had black and white pictures printed onto these and just like mosh podge them onto the frame. So that was an easy way to do it. Um, and I'm an eyeballer and we could even cut the width of this paper down. I'm doing it sideways. I know it says, you guys want to read it? <laughs> we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. So story of our life, right? <laughs> are awesome things are a little crazy in the tennis household right now we are in the middle of moving and it's holidays and all that so yeah it's crazy so if you embrace the crazy <laughs> um the saying would be good and okay i'm taking my engineer print and i'm lightly tacking it down with some tape here and this is we're going to do some tracing you're going to have some hand cramping if you do all this all in one setting but i just tape it down um on two sides and I'm doing it sideways just so you guys can hopefully see a bit better. Um, and then if once we do the tracing, I'll show you, you can kind of peek under there, and this will keep your paper right in place so it won't shift or, or mess up any of your tracing. Okay, so next we're going to trace. There are two options for tracing. Um, you can use a pencil, and you don't want it super sharp, and you don't want it super dull. So kind of in the middle, I've kind of dulled this one down. Um, the sharp ones will go like right through the paper, so no go there. Um, and then, or you could use a ballpoint pen. The good thing about the pencil is that if it went through the paper, you could probably erase it. Pen, not so much. Um, but I do prefer the pen. It gives me a little bit of a better line. So, um, I recommend a really flat surface. I had to put a, if you saw, I have a, like a dry erase board under me because our table is like farmhouse and old and bumpy and it didn't work very good for putting on the chalk and like pressing on an even surface. So the flatter the surface, the better on this one. So... Did anybody say they've used engineer prints before? Oh, just a lot there. of questions on where... Um, where to get the prints, yep. okay. Yep, two dollars on the prints, two to four bucks, depending on what size you want. Yep. Um, and when I get in on the tracing, I don't know if you can see this, so I'll, I don't know, I'm um, gonna go along the line, and you can, I'm pretty good at freehanding, so I can kind of stay on that line, but if you need to, it doesn't have to be perfect. It could be scribbled all along this line. It's gonna give you the same, effect. So I don't want you to think you can't do it. Okay. So there's kind of a neat line, kind of a scribbly line and then we pick it up and you're going to have a line. Basically you're creating a guide that you're going to fill in. Mm -hmm. Um, so you could do anything. I'm trying to think what else you could print on here. Like I think it'd be a great gift to make a personalized one with your family name on it. You could put a year. Um, so that's the fun thing about DIY things that I like the best is that I can personalize it for myself. So, um, and I'll even tell you guys these fonts. I know this one is called Albrecht. It's A L B R E T, and that's a freebie on um, dafont.com. So if you're into fonts and one that looks like calligraphy, like you might have written it, that script one um, is that Albrecht font that I really like. It's one I use a lot. Well, hello, Yvonne from Sweden. So, hi, Sweden. Yes, yeah, we're just tracing. So you guys can try uh, trace, and you chat while I trace. <laughs> so, and this is part that doesn't have to be super perfect. So, I'm just kind of going on, the, outlining each letter here. So you all have to let me know, Are you? do you have a spot that you would hang this or do you plan on making one? Are you inspired? That was like three questions, sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it when y'all talk to me while I'm tracing. And I'll try to do a good job of relaying. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of comments going? Are you trying to? I'm trying. 
Yes. Um, so we are, um, well, Katie is um, the owner of Junk to Jewels. We are a DIY. <laughs> well, you just put me out there all by myself. No, like, I, <laughs> he's weighing it too, y'all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we have a DIY paint studio in Northwest Arkansas. And we do all kinds of crafty stuff yes. like this and other things. Yeah, this week we have a dozen workshops. So ladies come in and we provide the raw wood and the stencils essentially for everything from door hangers to signs to home decor. And um, they get to choose their paint colors, uh, their ribbon, their bows. And our crew is pretty darn crafty and they make everybody look like pros. <laughs> That's so. the goal. That is the goal. <laughs> so you leave with a finished professional looking project. Okay. I am just going over here. I wanted to do at least a couple lines so you guys can see that. Um, and I have one kind of done, so we'll do a presto change. -o. So I've kind of gone over these. Um, so you can see this outline once you yeah, pick it up. It's I know kind it's of not... hard to see with the yellow, but in real life you can definitely see. If you're sitting here to trace it, I feel like you could see it good enough to right, right. fill in the Yeah, the and so that's what you did. You just transferred mm -hmm. the wording with the chalk. Yep, so that's called chalk transferring. Um, and it works great if, like I said, if you don't have a cutter or you're trying to make something really large, like uh, one of our most popular signs is the big old gather sign. So if you ordered the really big print of the word gather from Staples, like an engineer type print, you could put it onto wood. Um, I, I haven't tried the canvas, but I think you can do canvas or this um, craft paper would be a good base for any of that. So I'm gonna do my change over here so you guys don't have to watch me <laughs> trace and stencil all that. I got one that's part way done, okay? But um, the main tip is tape it in place, use a medium sharpened pencil <laughs> and a flat surface on that part. So here, I'll flip it so it's going the same way. Okay. You do wanna put something under it if, you know, maybe I'm not gonna do it the same way because I gotta do it. Sorry, I'll just make a lot of ruckus. <laughs> already traced um, so I've started my sharpening so one tip I have for you again keep it kind of um, your stencil taped in place and I try to work where I'm not dragging over what I've already chalked so I'm kind of working this way instead of like where I would normally write from right to left um, so it seems a little backwards but um, you know, that's a good tip so you don't end up erasing all your tracing work that you just did. Right. I'm going to show you a variety of Sharpies because a juicy Sharpie is something I love <laughs> but necessary for this project. So depending on the letter styles and fonts you have, you may need a few different things. Like this is a, I think it's super fine. Um, no, this one says fine. Fine. It's, it's like the Sharpie pen. Oh yeah. It's, so this was good for like outlining. So I like to outline first and then fill in. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have like your standard Sharpie. We have a King Sharpie and a Chisel Tips Sharpie. Yeah. So this Chisel Tip is nice. So get yourself, you know, a few Sharpies depending on what you're doing. This one's probably a little too big for most things, but if you had like a big solid heart you were doing or something like that, that might be the way to go. But I just want to show you, there's tons of Sharpies. I'm not using paint pens um, because I feel like they got bleedy. Um, so the Sharpie was the way to go. You can do paint um, on something like this if you wanted to as well. I think the Sharpie is probably the, the average crafter's way to go. So, um, but you can do tons of different fonts, like more than you could just handwrite if you do this graphic transfer technique. Like these are really funky ones, you know, mixing up the cursives and then like these that had the, the white space in them. Mm -hmm. um, but we could have added trees or presents or all sorts of things. So this one we embellished with a vine, the one we're doing today, so. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get back to my tracing so you guys can see this. So I'm gonna use the regular Sharpie just to outline my words. And the tracing creates this, the chalk outline plus kind of a little reservoir or indent into the craft paper that makes it pretty easy to trace. I'm doing it pretty fast. You can be a little more careful than me. One thing you'll learn about me if you <laughs> if you watch many of our videos, I'm kind of an impatient crafter, so I tend to like distressed, <laughs> which this is not this project, um, and things that go kind of just quick. So I'm gonna try to make it work, so you guys don't have to watch me for two hours tracing, right? I don't know how close they are if they can see. 
But if you have any problematic spots, this is like right here, I didn't see a thing I can kind of trace, um, kind of like gauge where it was gonna go. But if you need to, you could lay that chalk thing right back over it and kind of apply some more chalk, give yourself a better guideline mm -hmm. if there's any parts you feel are questionable. So. Did we ever hear what time it was in Finland? That's crazy. It's like middle of the day here in Arkansas. But I heard people from all over the place. Yeah, we've got people from all over the place. It's, I heard that it's very cold in Maine. I believe it. Mm -hmm. I know. I'd like to have a, a white Christmas, but we're also moving right now, so I kind of yeah, wouldn't like any snow. I'm like, ugh. What's one thing that would make moving worse? I can imagine is snow on top of all the stuff we're trying to move from. Point A to point B, huh? Right, yeah. And then is there a way that they can come back and watch this later? They totally can. It will be saved on the um, their wall. If you hit share, it will be saved on your wall so you can reference it later. So that's a great way to do it. Um, or you can go back to Home Talk. Sometimes they have lots of things going on on their page. They have a, such a great community of DIY inspiration that sometimes you lose it if you go back there. So sharing is probably the best way to watch it later. And you can totally fast forward to the, <laughs> through the boring tracing parts if you want. Um, and then another way to get the information later is there is a um, link to a blog post that I did. It's step-by-step -step, um, with pictures for you, and that's over on the Home Talk website. And um, the producers at Home Talk have probably posted that, so you guys can see that at the top of this. Um, they like to help us out. But yeah, I try to take pictures beforehand. Any of the projects that we do on here are going to be um, pictured with step-by-step -step directions on there. And you'll have a supplies list link to all the things that you would need. So I'm just filling in here. And this is the part that takes some time. So I recommend like doing it on the um, craft paper and you can roll it up and roll it and keep it with a little piece of tape. Um, like I said, you may wanna do the tracing in one match with the chalk part and then you may wanna come back and do your Sharpie. Yeah, and this is one of those projects that you could do it in pieces and yes yeah, so you, you could know. roll it up store it and then come back late, later when your hand isn't cramping <laughs> i'm gonna try to do as much as i can today and then i'm gonna show you how i hang it um so you guys have those tips as well mm -hmm. so if you're coming in wondering what i'm doing scribbling on craft paper y'all we are making some diy scroll art which is super trendy i don't i mean are you guys instagram lovers i love instagram if you're a creative and you like pictures or you're a visual person that is oh my goodness there's so many pretty homes and projects to look at so i saw it on there and i'm the one too that watches it and goes oh my gosh i could do that right i could do that <laughs> so i'll figure it out versus um you know paying top dollar for somebody to do it for me i guess but uh you know i appreciate their art i do and i think there's kind of two uh, kinds of customers, which I realize in my own business, in our DIY studio, there's the people that just want a custom order from us, um, and they'd have a, rather have us paint the sign just the way they want, or there's people who want to come in and uh, enjoy the experience of making something themselves for their home, so, mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're in the latter uh, group of people like me, <laughs> then this is a great project, and you can pick out exactly what it says, and I may try to... Um, we don't have internet because in the midst of moving, um, mm -hmm. but I may try to do a screen tutorial type thing where I can show you right on Staples how I order those, um, and I can even show how to do some simple graphics in PicMonkey. If that's something y'all are interested, just let me know. Mm -hmm. Give some thumbs up, hearts, let us know. That's like a big virtual hug when y'all do that, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, they're coming. Oh, <laughs> they yeah. said, yes, do that. Okay, they're like, we get the tracing. <laughs> Show us how to do this other part, so. But, uh, yeah, if I had internet, I would have pulled up my computer today. But. Right, and so the prints that we got, we got them from Staples. Um, Katie ordered them yesterday? Yeah, it's yeah. usually, I mean, 24 hours. Yeah, okay. so she ordered them from staples.com um, in the, your local and went and picked them up at the local Staples store. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, does like Office Max and stuff do these as well? I assume. I've always used Staples, but I assume. Any of the Office stores, you can order engineer prints or blueprints. Just black and white cheap enlargements is what you want. Mm -hmm. And they were, what, like $2? Yep, 2 bucks and a roll of craft paper. And you probably already have some Sharpies. So <laughs> this is a pretty simple project. 
And you can do your favorite quote, or like I said, create something personalized for your own home, or if you have a favorite scripture. Um, another tip I wanted to give for y'all is that when you're tracing these, and I know I talked about the chalk, um, you don't, I probably have it all over me. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. It dusts off. Um, I don't want to smear it and stuff. I'm also being careful. I don't. I have it on the edge of here, so I don't fold my paper because I am going to be hanging it. Um, I don't want any folds or creases or wrinkles. So this is kind of the best way to work on it. Mm -hmm. um, is laid out like this. Yeah. It's kind of relaxing, like those um, color books, you know, adult color books and stuff. Now that people are doing, it's kind of relaxing. Yeah. And do you know what the bottom line of font is? The name um, of it? I'm gonna have to look. I think it's called Explorado, um, Explore or something. Uh, there's like four different versions of it that I have, and I'm not sure if it's a paid font or a freebie font. But I do know that other one is called the Albrecht font, and it is free on DaFont.com. Mm -hmm. um, and do you have any advice for a lefty? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not left-handed. Um, I mean, I'm essentially going up and down instead of right to left, so I don't think it matters i mean this the the sharpie isn't really gonna bleed or anything like that i mean I, or like i'm not gonna rub it and then it's it more so of the chalk i mean you're trying right. to stay off of the chalk until you can trace it mm -hmm. um, so i mean and my arm is in it but i can still see the indents enough but you may want to chalk a line sharpie in a line then chalk the next line and then sharpie it in so right like you, you have your paper taped on the paper right so i can so put it right can back just in just roll it right back spot. up yeah. and re-chalk if you need to yep so okay i'm gonna fill in this line of text and then i'm gonna show y'all how i hang these and kind of some tips i have for that Woo. I'm trying to be very fast. <laughs> okay. Oh, the, so um, the question was posed of how we started this. Uh, how we start Junk to Jewels? Yes. <laughs> kind of by accident. That's what I always say. It um, really, yeah. But we, yeah, I've been crafting full time for three years now. Um, but before we called, uh, this guy over here, the junk hunk, we called him a naked carpenter oh. <laughs> because he would always be outside cutting wood and stuff, uh, with no shirt on in the middle of summer and stuff. And so the climate thing, we always like crafting together. I mean, we've done we, homes together and we remodeled a couple, um, homes and we've you know, we've always done stuff on our own instead of paying somebody to I do agree. it for John us. revealed that he was like crafty and enjoyed woodworking and I'm sure it's something he still wishes he could take back. <laughs> but, but I mean, I remember probably 15 years ago making Christmas presents on mm -hmm. our porch at the house that we were living at. So we've always been kind of crafty. Started really doing craft fairs. We did some frames that really got popular and started an Etsy shop. And um, But really when we started doing classes and workshops was... Five years ago, we're almost on our fifth birthday, um, we decided to rent a spot so he wouldn't have to be naked in the driveway in the middle of summer. And um, we rented a spot, and I started inviting my friends. He thought he was going to have a workshop all to himself. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> I thought I was going to have like half of it be a wood shop, and then the other half I could, you know, um, rebuild the old cars. And it, <laughs> it turned out that I really got pushed into the corner. He had a little sliver of space. had a little sliver of space. But... but it was about the time that like Pinterest was getting really popular and stuff and everybody wanted to be crafty. And so um, I just started inviting my friends because I had a really good space to be messy and not worry about dust and paint. And um, I very quickly realized they weren't quite as crafty as they wanted to be. And I ended up like teaching them instead of uh, getting to craft with my friends. So yeah, it just kind of happened. And I think uh, we, were, we joked that our very first class we made, it was February. So we made burlap door hangers, heart shaped with fabric, and we hot glued and shoved them full of uh, Walmart sacks, and it was twelve dollars, twelve dollars, <laughs> and it probably took me like, got two weeks to like get everything prepared or whatever. It was pretty funny. Sure. Okay, um, I'm gonna trim this down. So I'm an eyeballer. You could totally measure. I um. This roll is 30 inches wide and my paper was only 18 inches. So I just want like three or four inches overhang on each side. So I'm kind of um, 
rolling it up and cutting it. John's even cut the whole rolls. Like he'll take this, he'll take this whole roll on the saw and like chop it. Like if I have, I a lot of times do um, wrapping paper as like table runners in the studio for fun events. And so he'll cut them down to 12 inches or chop it in half. So um, if you had a bunch you were gonna do that were all gonna be 24 inches, you could cut your whole darn roll if you got a saw. But I'm just cutting this one side down to about the width that I think that it should be. And you can also lay that out flat and draw a line on it and just cut down you the totally line. To, you like, guys are crafty. If you're watching Home Talk, you're crafty. You know, you can cut a piece of paper down. Whatever width you need it to be. I don't want it to be too scraggly. Okay. So now we're going to talk hanging, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we left the excess above and beyond. We're not... You know, totally done, but I want you guys to see. Um, we got these super powerful magnets, and we had to order them on Amazon. You can totally use hot glue. That's what I used on the one behind me. Um, if you're just doing one, you may not want to get the magnets. Um, I felt like the the magnets made it. It's going to make it easy for me to roll it up and pull it out for next year. Um, and you can get those like tube mailers and roll it up and save it for next year. So if it's something that you plan to use again, you may want to get the magnets because you can take them off and whatnot. Um, now this is going to be stuck in place because I've hot glued it. Yeah. Um, so but these, these are the tiniest little magnets. Mm -hmm. I, how much were they? John actually ordered them. Uh, they were $12, $13. But I got a lot. With free shipping. So. <laughs> With free shipping. Thank you, Amazon. Yeah. Um, but they are very powerful. Like I think it said they held up to like five pounds or something in these little they don't know. magnets. They were ridiculously strong. Yeah. So you just need two on each end and you gotta try to keep them away from each other. It's like a fun little game. <laughs> so I'm gonna stick one behind. I have it scrolled up. The paper rolled a few times. And then it can see how it just clicked it and it so found, strong it found that one. It so found that's the cool. other one. Um, but this is even strong enough to hold like the twine that um, I'm going to put it to hang on the wall. So I can, it's not going to rip or tear. So you want about the same roll. And it's easier to put the one on the outside and then the, on the inside just finds it. I think that's so funny. Okay. So there's that one. When it hangs on the wall, that'll hold that, right? Yep. And then we need one for the bottom, which I think the magnets are the best for the bottom because that's going to hold it from doing that business and, or just flapping flat for you, right? Oh, these magnets, they're something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I should do that again. Okay. I got one magnet right here. And I'm just like... Putting it in the uh, inside, and it just finds that other one, and it's going to tuck up that paper so it won't be falling down. I've seen some really cute other projects with this craft paper too, um, like where you can make a cute little market list for your house and um, kind of hang it more on a rod or something that you could change out and tear off the uh, paper. So. So if you guys seen any other craft paper projects. I feel like with this one roll, I've got like five kinds of projects to do. Ah, okay, got it, got it. Oh, that one didn't find that one. <laughs> it's right here. Oh, fell out. Thank you. Oh, no. <laughs> Shut up. Hang on. I should probably put it in the same hand. Like, this hurts my fingers to try to get them separated. No, I got it. Magnet. Okay, there we go. Okay. okay, so once you've got those in there, um, then you can just pick out whatever kind of rope or twine or yarn that you would like and just, I would feed it through the tube. Sometimes you need to tie it to a pencil. So this is hard going through with my hand or like you can stand it up and try to drop it through there. But I suggest tying it to something rigid like your pencil. And then, it's going to be quick and easy. Look, at you didn't know I was so clever, huh, honey? <laughs> <laughs> he was probably waiting for me to struggle. I figured this out. I tried it. <laughs> okay, so the pencil is going to go through a lot easier because it has some weight to it. I don't even know if this is the top. Yep, this is the top. <laughs> okay. So you're going to feed that right through there. 
And then, I feel like, I feel bad that it's half done, but I'm gonna finish it. I just don't want you to have to endure all my tracing. <laughs> Today, you guys can go over to Junk to Jewels, I'll get this done, and then I'll share the files for you guys as well. Okay. So, I don't have a pretty knot in mind or anything like that. I would just kind of tie it together, however you, high you think you need it. Like, well, you could also tie it and then slide it back into the folded paper to where you didn't see the knot. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. Good job. Look at you. So I can tie it and you won't even see the knot. That's such a good idea. But you being all crafty. Okay, so per John's suggestion, so you, you can, can totally rotate it around. I think that's a good idea. I also think hanging it with like a little wreath where you hang it on the wall or wherever you're going to display it would be super cute. Do a bow. I love making bows. So. Okay, look at it. That looks so nice and finished. Okay, so we've got our hanger, got our paper, our handy dandy magnets. And I'll keep tracing away here. Um, is there any last minute questions or anything like that? I can help you all with there. John's reading, trying to read. <laughs> yep, no. Okay. We're all good? Yep, okay. so we're just uh, ready to see the finish. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> well, Darlene asked if you have a yardstick in the hole um, to help support it. I don't. Those magnets are going to hold it. It's pretty light. Um, it's not I feel like it's gonna tear or anything like that. Um, I have done a few things where um, I've done like, for example, like this at the top of the bottom and sandwich paper in between. So you could totally do something like that with the same type of project. You could have the craft paper sandwiched in between and this could be your top. But that I would do more um, with glue or something secure where it would be permanent in those things. But yeah, that's a, that's a cute idea too. So for sure. All right, well, until next time, Home Talk, I'm going to be on next week, I think the same time, so next Thursday at noon, and I'm going to do something else with engineer prints. So I've got a couple crafty ideas for you. So I will be back with that, and y'all have a fantastic rest of the week. We appreciate you. Thank you.